you, Lais. Thank you to the organization of uh, EuroPython for accepting this talk. And okay, I am Ramon Corominas, accessibility consultant, because uh, I have a, um, a retinitis pigmentosa. It is a, a retinal disease, and I uh, am losing my vision. So uh, since uh, some years, I use a screen reader to uh, use my computer. My screen reader is this. Let me. Okay. Excuse me? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is my screen reader. If I uh, pass the uh, slides, you will see that my screen reader reads uh, aloud the text in the slide. Uh, obviously, I usually have it here, but now I have changed the output so you can hear it, obviously, you probably need a, a, a little <laughs> slower. Okay, so this is my screen reader. I will switch to my earphone. Okay, so the presentation is about this problem. Uh, is uh, how can I uh, debug a screen reader if I am using a screen reader? Because one of the problems is that if I uh, try to debug my screen reader, uh, I go step by step in my screen reader, so my screen reader is frozen and I cannot uh, hear anything. So I cannot uh, use my computer because the screen reader is frozen. Okay, so uh, the, the, talk, the talk is about debugging. So first I will try to debug something uh, more uh, simple than, uh, than the screen reader. And I have prepared a little game that is the typical uh, guess the number. Uh, we will generate a random number. Then we have a main loop where I have to ask the user for a bet and then compare with the secret number. If they match, I r run the winner uh, uh, block and exit. If they don't match, I give another opportunity with the high or low uh, indication, and uh, if the max tries are reached, then it is loser and game over, okay? So this is the code in Python. It is very simple code. The main code, the main program is just the settings and the call to the, to the, main, to the main function. Uh, I have also some modules for the UI and for the uh, audio player. And then the um, function is just uh, the, in, the comparisons and the uh, running the different blocks, okay? So, um, let me, oh, sorry. I, okay, this is the play game function that you see, it's very simple. I, I will not go uh, here uh, more deeply. Okay, so debugging the program. Uh, uh, I need some steps to debug a program. First, I will create a virtual environment to isolate the libraries that I need for the, for the project. In this case, I am using uh, Pygame for the audio player. Uh, we have to install, uh, to install the, those dependencies, uh, in this case, Pygame. Uh, I have to open the project as a, as a folder, in the, as a workspace in Visual Studio Code so I can establish some settings in Visual Studio Code. Then we have to select the Python interpreter and then set breakpoints. And after that, I can start debugging. So I will do that now so you can see what I pretend to do with my screen reader with any package uh, program because this is the um, aim of the talk that you will see that this works for other uh, things too. Okay, let me. So if I go to my first demo, I open this as workspace, and if I, okay, if I, now I can uh, create the virtual environment. <clears throat> this um, usually takes a bit of time, but uh, it is just the um, Python uh, dash m uh, vm uh, dot vm 
So now I have a virtual environment. I can activate it. And now that I have activated it, I can install the requirements in my virtual environment. <coughs> and with that, I have everything I need. I can now run the game. You will see that the secret number is whatever. Low. Okay, winner. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, but what I want to do is debug the program. So, you see that I have here my virtual environment that I have just created. The audio player is a package. The waves, the, the web files that I need to play the, the game. Here is my main program and the requirements and the UI.py where I have some uh, little functions. Okay, so I have here the gamify.py. I have already set a breakpoint in the uh, if, I think, in the first comparison. So if I um, now run the program, uh, let me check the Okay, I have here the breakpoint. You can hear that, that that is an audio cue that tells me that there is a breakpoint, okay? So if I now run the program from Visual Studio Code with F5, you will see that the program, oh, sorry, I have to, maybe I have to select the interpreter. Ah, okay, it is already uh, selected, so, okay. If I run the uh, uh, active fail file, okay, now it is running. If I go to the terminal, I can, uh, sorry, okay, I can type there my bed and I can now go step by step Okay, so for example, now I'm here and I know that it is low before it uh, hits the, the thing. I, I, will, I will inspect the, this variable. So now I know that the secret number is 11. So <laughs> in the next try, I can put directly 11 and run the program until the end. So I win again, okay. <laughs> So that is the bugging. So th this is the purpose of this talk, okay? So in the, uh, wait a minute, okay, yes. Ah, okay, I forgot to create the launch.json, but anyway, this is very easy. If I go again to my demos folder, again, wait. No, why it is not? Okay, now if I open it again with code, I open again the okay. I open this, and if I go to the debug, uh, the run and debug panel, I can go to create a launch.json. And it will ask me what kind of, uh, of launch. So the Python file. So I have my first launch JSON that is just a, a request launch that is to launch the program from Visual Studio Code. And this will be saved here in the UBS Code uh, folder. Uh, I suppose you can see where I am when I move the keyboard and so on because if not, I can highlight it. Okay, so, uh, okay, this is the example of launch JSON, just uh, for the, mm, you have it in the presentation. I will uh, upload the slides later. So, uh, I will introduce you my uh, screen reader, and that's the reason of this talk. My uh, screen reader is, uh, ma uh, the main program is in Python, is, uh, is an application created with py2exe. 
it is packed, and the core uh, of the program and parts of the standard library are packed in a zip file that is library.zip. Uh, this is because of the configuration of Py2exe. But uh, the interesting thing is that uh, NVDA has also some add-ons that are in plain text that we can uh, uh, program in plain text and load them from the uh, running Py2exe program. Okay, so I will simulate this more or less with the Py game, uh, with the game uh, that I programmed. So you can see how I will uh, debug NVDA uh, um, using this example. Uh, NVDA has also some uh, C++ uh, libraries uh, that are extensions that uh, for uh, performance and system access. But I have the first problem that the main entry point of NVDA is inside the executable file. Okay, I cannot run it from VS Code. Okay, NVDA is open source, so maybe I can uh, run the code from the uh, source. Uh, and you can, of course, but you have to install a lot of things. First, we, you have to install Git. This is usually installed if you are a developer, so this is not a problem. You have to install the exact version of Python that needs uh, NVDA because it is attached to this version. I, they are planning to, to upgrade, but uh, for the moment it is uh, this version. We have to install the Visual Studio build tools because we have to compile all the uh, C++ extension. Uh, and this is about 20 gigabytes of space to install these uh, build tools. And the final step is to build everything that it is not an easy task, I, say, I must say. So uh, there are many problems in this approach uh, of trying to um, run from the source code. Because uh, building from source is not easy. You have to install a, a lot of things. You need a lot of disk space. And uh, the main problem of this is that debugging may interfere with the running program. Because, for example, NVDA is always reading keystrokes. Keystrokes uh, is reading the focus, uh, where is the focus, which window is open, and so on. So if I am in the debugger, obviously, I cannot debug uh, other windows or other things, and probably the keystrokes that I uh, uh, press in the debugger will interfere with uh, NVDA and so on. Uh, and this is common to many other programs that are not necessarily uh, a screen reader. Okay, anyway, if we develop an add-on, we need to check that everything works when we pack the program. So uh, we cannot uh, mm, uh, bypass this step. But, okay, if we don't have the main source, because maybe the project is not uh, open source, they mm, let us uh, to develop add-ons in plain text or something like that, but they don't give us the uh, source code of the main program. But also, if the host language of Python is not uh, Python, for example, if we use C++ or C Sharp to pack or to, em to embed a Python application, uh, we cannot launch it from VS Code the normal way. Or maybe if the application is running in another operating system, or for example, in Raspberry Pi, where we don't have even uh, Visual Studio Code, or even in a Mac, or maybe uh, in Linux, or uh, in a Docker container, for example, okay? So the idea is to run a uh, the, the screen reader, in this case, the screen reader, in another computer. Okay, so the goal is to run a second copy of the screen reader that I can uh, stop and pause and uh, continue and so on and uh, will not interfere with my debugger, debugger because the debugger is in the local computer, okay? So my local computer will be the uh, debugger tool, will be the, the uh, computer that has Visual Studio Code, and the remote computer will have the program running, and I will connect to the program running through a, a debug adapter. That is uh, what the talk is about. Debug P, debug Pi, uh, is, the, uh, is an implementation of the debug adapter protocol 
the debug adapter protocol basically communicates uh, the debugging tool, that is Visual Studio Code, or maybe PyCharm, and unless I think, uh, I think PyCharm doesn't work the same way. But anyway, the debugging tool, it is a bridge between the debugging tool and the debugger itself, or the running process that is in the uh, remote machine. It works be, uh, with the classical stream of uh, requests, uh, responses, and events in JSON format. So uh, the idea is that the debug adapter will send messages to the debugger tool from the debugger and uh, vice versa, okay? Um, and for example, this, this kind of things. Uh, if I set a breakpoint, this is a request from the debugger tool to the debugger uh, uh, to, to the debugger in the remote machine to set a breakpoint in a file in the remote machine, and it will respond with, a, um, with an answer or a response that says, okay, breakpoint uh, established, or maybe breakpoint cannot be set because the file doesn't exist, for example. Okay, and uh, also other events like threads, like exceptions, they are all communicated between the two machines. Okay, so the basic uses of debug P is, okay, uh, sorry, because, okay, I have uh, the code here, and obviously we have to install debug P in the, debug pi in the, in the virtual environment. Then we have, we have uh, the import debug pi, and uh, this line, if not debug P is, is client connected, is to avoid that the mm, adapter tries to listen twice in the same port, okay? Because uh, the port is being used. So uh, if you try to launch the process a second time, it will, uh, it will give an exception, okay? Give it a minute. We have also some lines to uh, to uh, save logs to the uh, to the um, to the hard disk, so we can uh, we can search there uh, if we have some problems debugging. Then we have the listen uh, with the port number. This this would be uh, for a local uh, debugging. Okay, it will be remote in the sense that we will connect to the process from the debug tool, but in this case, we are opening the port locally. Uh, by default, the host is localhost, okay? And finally, we have the debug P uh, wait, for, wait for client. Uh, that this means that uh, when this line is, uh, is hit, uh, the debugger will stop here, so we can um, debug our program from the first line of code, okay? Because if not, we have to wait to a, a natural stop in the in the program. For example, in our game, it would be the input, uh, asking the input to the user, there is a natural stop, uh, and then we can connect there. But maybe the program is running um, without the stops, so we need this kind of things to stop the program in that line. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, we have to change the launch.json so we connect uh, instead of launch, okay? This is just uh, going to the, to the menu and select remote attach instead of, um, of debug this, this file. Okay, so now we will see how to run the remote debugger in the remote computer. So, reminder, of the goal, it is just the, to run the program in the remote computer and to debug from the local computer with the debug in the uh, middle. So, in the remote computer where the program will uh, will run, we need the full code of the program and the virtual environment and dependencies because uh, the program needs to run. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the basic. Uh, needs, uh, it is the, the program and the dependencies. 
we have to change the line of debugp.listen to uh, include also the host. So uh, it is a tuple of uh, values, a pair of values, uh, with the host and port. We have to allow the program through firewall in the remote computer because we are trying to open a port. And uh, Visual Studio Code or uh, any debugging tool is not required because we only need to run the program there, okay? So in the remote computer, we only need to change the line uh, with the host and uh, port. And in the local computer, uh, uh, I go very fast or is it okay? Okay. In the local computer, in the debugging computer, I will have to, uh, uh, I will need the, to mirror the code that I want to debug. Maybe I don't need the full code, only the code that I need to debug. I will show you this later. Uh, the virtual environment and dependencies are not required because I don't need to run the program. I, uh, the program will not run in my local computer. <coughs> uh, I need the developer tool, the debugging tool, in this case Visual Studio Code. And, uh, ah, okay, and I need to change the host in the launch.json uh, because I need to connect to the remote computer. In this case, uh, if you showed uh, before, in the listen, uh, I put uh, 0.0.0.0, that is the full interface, so it will listen in any uh, IP that is connected to this computer, to the remote computer. Uh, but for the connection from the launch.json, I have to establish the exact IP or host name to the remote computer. And we don't need the same Python version or even we don't need any Python version in the local computer because the program, again, is not running in the local computer but in the remote computer. Uh, this is, could be good for other things but uh, uh, later. So this is the launch.json here. Let me check. Okay, 24 minutes, I think I'm in time. So, um, uh, the number two, <laughs> okay. So I have a remote computer because you see only one computer, but if I have another machine, I have a virtual machine here with VMware uh, workstation so this is my remote computer, and I can switch to it because I am using a remote add-on in NVDA that lets me to connect, uh, lets me connect to another computer. So if you see the earth and the uh, and the floor is the moon, it's because I am in the remote computer. And if you see the uh, moon, it's because I am in the local computer. Okay. So, if I switch to the remote computer now, uh, obviously you, you don't see that, but I hear it here. Uh, okay, if I switch here, I can go to the demos in the remote. You see that the remote is white because the moon is more or less white, <laughs> okay? So, if I go to the remote, I have my demo number two, and uh, I have, um, let me check. Okay, I can open it with code just to show you how this works. Uh, I don't need a Visual Studio Code in the remote computer, but to show you this, it is better to have it, okay? So, here I have, okay, this is because, Okay, the cache. <laughs> okay, I have the virtual environment already created. I have my modules. I have the backlogs of another session that I made. Uh, I have the waves, the resources that I need to run the program in the uh, remote computer and everything else, okay? But I don't need Visual Studio Code at all. I can just go, uh, let me, let me check. Okay, if I go to the, 
demos remote. Okay, if I go here and open a CMD here, okay, I am in the right place. Uh, do you see the backslash? I don't know why I cannot. Let me check. Uh, okay, now. The keyboard was not working, I don't know why. Okay, so I said uh, I don't need Visual Studio Code to run the program. I can run it from here, okay? Uh, let me, okay, you will see. What? What? Um, no, okay. Now I have the debugger connected, okay? It is waiting for uh, another computer to connect. I, it is waiting for the um, uh, local computer, in this case, to connect. If I go again to my local computer, okay, let me, okay, let me go to my demos. If I open the folder in my local computer, remember? Let me, okay, wait. Oh. What happens? I don't know what happened. It's not changing. Okay, I think I, I've uh, closed the presentation. Okay, open with code. Wait a minute. Okay, I have my code here, okay, and if I go to the, okay, if I go to the launch, uh, um, to the Gamify Pi, I can establish a breakpoint here, okay, so I have it already, but I will put it again, okay, added break, breakpoint, and uh, my launch.json is already uh, set up, so it will connect to the remote computer. I have the remote computer there in the left side, so you will see that if I now go, excuse me, ah, the presentation, so, sorry, sorry, it is just, Okay, now you have the remote computer. <laughs> I, I was seeing it white, so I suppose that it was the remote computer. Okay, so I have now <clears throat> my local computer uh, prepared to connect to the debugging uh, session that is already launched in the remote computer. Okay, so if I press now F5, okay, you see that probably in the remote computer there is some text, I don't know, uh, I suppose. I ah, know, because I put another uh, breakpoint in the first line of code, so you can see that the wait for client is uh, awaiting for um, my, um, okay, you, you see where, I, where is my cursor, isn't it? You, you see that I am reading the different lines here, okay. So if I run uh, to the next breakpoint with F5 again, okay, now you have seen that in the remote computer, uh, it is already asking for the number, okay? 
So if I switch to the remote computer and I write there uh, three, I am a bit stupid, so, <laughs> okay. I go there, but you see that the computer, uh, the local has paused again because uh, it has hit again a breakpoint in the local computer. So if I go to my local computer, <clears throat> I can now do again the trick that, oh, I was very far. <laughs> it's 19, okay? And uh, of course I can go through my code and uh, I can I can go with F11, for example, I can go to the um, uh, to the inner here, so I can go, okay, to the function. It, it is opening the different files that I have in my local computer, so I can uh, debug the full program. Okay, so my bed is too low, okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, I win <laughs> again. Okay, so uh, this is the typical uh, setup of a debugging of a remote debugging. Okay, this is more or less easy, but uh, we go again to the presentation. Okay. Okay, you know that in my local setup, I have the launch.json with the uh, connection. Oh, okay, I, I didn't show that, but uh, this is a minute. So in my, in my, here, let me check. If I go to the launch.json, you see that there is the IP of my remote computer. In this case, it is a local network because the virtual machine is sharing the um, same network with the normal computer, okay? You know that this is just a virtual machine and I can connect from one to the other, okay. Let me go back to, sometimes it does, Strange things, I don't know why. Okay, this is not. Okay. What happens here? Maybe it is that I am going very fast, but. Okay, I lost my presentation. Oh, okay, I was in the remote computer. <laughs> so I cannot uh, control my remote, my local computer if I am in the other. <laughs> okay. Hey. <sighs> I don't know what happens here. Okay, I open them again. So uh, it is in full screen. Excuse me? But it's in the in full screen? Yes. Okay. 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 Okay, okay, simplifying. So uh, that's the typical, uh, the typical um, debugging session, but we don't need the full code of the program in our local environment, because in our local computer, we only need the code that we are really going to uh, debug. In this case, I have a main program that calls another program. Uh, I mean, it is uh, uh, loading the Pygame function. So I can separate that pi game, pi, uh, sorry, pi game, no. It's uh, the play game function. So I can separate it to another uh, package, for example, 
So the main program will look like this. Uh, from games, dot game, uh, guest game, I import the play game. So now it is in another package outside the main program. And uh, the game, uh, the guest game, dot py uh, file will look that like this. This is just the, uh, all that we need to uh, uh, set up the, the play game uh, function and uh, the play game function itself. Okay. <coughs> so, in the local computer, we don't need the full code. So, we can change the path mappings in our uh, local computer to match the uh, way that each side sees the code. Okay. Um, you will understand this later, probably. Uh, the point here is, uh, in my local computer, I will open the games folder where the guest game, uh, dot pi is. Only that folder, the games folder, that is the um, folder of the package. Uh, but in the remote computer, I will have uh, the full program with all the main program, the the packages like the audio player, the UI, or something like that, okay? So, from the local side, the guestgame.py is in the root folder, because it is the root of the workspace, but in the remote computer, the games folder is a subfolder of the root uh, folder for the remote program. Uh, do you understand what I said? <laughs> More or less, uh, we will see it later probably. When we connect to the remote computer, we can check if the breakpoints are set because if if there is a an error, uh, a mistake uh, with these uh, paths, the bre the breakpoint will not be set because the file will not exist if they if the remote debugger if the sorry if the debug adapt cannot match the file in the local computer with the file in the remote computer, they will not be able to establish any breakpoints, okay? And there is another option in the launch.json file that is the um, uh, just my code. Uh, this is useful if I want to go outside my program. If I put it in true, uh, then the debugger will only uh, debug the program that is loaded in the in the debugger. In this case, the um, the um, uh, guest game dot pi would be. Uh, but if I put it in false, I can go to other libraries, uh, maybe other dependencies of the program. For example, I can debug through pygame, or I can debug through the standard library going inside the functions of the standard library and so on, okay? Okay, the code for this is this one, okay? You see that the path mappings say, okay, for the local computer, uh, I have that it is the workspace, it is my current folder. If I open this folder, uh, this if I open the games folder, uh, the workspace is uh, the document root, uh, the workspace root. And from the other side, in the remote, uh, the program sees that folder like uh, as a subfolder of the root, okay? So it is uh, dot slash uh, games. And just my code in false. So, uh, okay, this is very nice, but what happens when I pack the program? Because until now, I have the source code of the program and I said that this has a lot of problems because maybe I don't have the source code, maybe it is uh, another host, maybe uh, another language host, I mean. Uh, maybe we uh, don't want to build the full environment of the, of the program because uh, we don't have 20 gigabytes uh, free in our uh, hard disk. Okay, so when we pack, uh, okay, first, how we pack a program with py2exe, okay? What we need is first py2exe, probably it will work also with py2installer, okay? But in this case, I am using this because it is the, the tool that uses uh, NVDA. Um, 
obviously I have to install it in the dependencies of the, of the virtual environment. I need a uh, setup.py with the modules and packages that I want to, uh, to pack in my uh, library.zip. Maybe we have to monkey patch some code. For example, for this demo, I have to patch uh, the, Pygame, uh, the Pygame package because it doesn't work uh, packet. It doesn't work well uh, in Python versions 3.8 or, or more, uh, or above. So in this case, I am using now 3.10 for the game. So uh, I have to patch the Pygame uh, module. Um, I, I will upload a repository with all of this, uh, maybe tomorrow or next week, okay? But uh, for the moment, uh, just to say that it will be there. Uh, in my GitHub, it is um, Ramon Corominas, and it will be slash EuroPython 2023, okay? Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, but we have a, another problem that debugpy uh, cannot be packed. This is a problem because debugpy uh, uses uh, some modules in the standard library that are banned in Py2exe that are not included in Py2exe, even if you try to include them, for example, site, site.py uh, is not um, packaged. Maybe we can patch uh, py to exe. I have not tried it yet uh, to do that, but uh, for the moment, I have not uh, managed to uh, pack the back pi in, inside the packet executable. So what can we do with that? Uh, ah, okay. I have the setup.py. This is the typical uh, minimal uh, setup.py. I have some includes with my UI mod module and packages with my audio player package, okay? And you, you see also the data files uh, that we have to copy all the waves uh, to the corresponding folder in the, in the packet program. And I have to copy also the plain text file that I want to debug, because in this case, I want to debug it in plain text, okay? So it is not uh, inside the pack, the packet uh, program, but it is in the uh, external folder games, uh, and it is copied just as a plain text uh, file, okay? Um, so if we want to import that file, we need to change the way we import it from the main program, because if we try to import it with the normal from Games dot guest game uh, import play game. Uh, it will not import or uh, or worse. It it will import it from the packet version, and we will not be able to um, include all the debug p stuff that we need there. Okay, so we change that. So uh, even in the packet program, the import will work because it is importing from a folder and not exactly from a package, okay? Uh, I hope this is understandable. <laughs> um, another thing here, uh, ah, and there are some lines uh, because uh, in the packet version, we don't have the uh, double underscore file, double underscore, uh, the, dun, the dunder, uh, you know, the double under uh, uh, dot file, uh, uh, you know, the file. <laughs> variable. We don't have that variable, so uh, we have to test uh, our uh, directory from the executable itself. Okay? Okay, so how can we load the backpy if we cannot uh, pack into the executable file? So, we can create an empty environment, we can install the backpy there in the virtual environment uh, that we just create for, for this, okay? We create an empty uh, environment that should be the same version uh, uh, as the Python version that we are using in the main program. Then uh, we install there the debug by uh, package. Then we can create a directory in our hard disk and uh, move the 
uh, DebugPy and all its dependencies, for example, DebugPy and DebugPy um, dist info or something like that, we have to copy that to our folder. We can add the, that folder to the sys.pass uh, variable, so we can now import from that folder instead of our virtual environment or whatever uh, that we wanted to to import from. Um, for example, uh, I usually have a folder in my uh, hard disk that is only for debuggers of the different versions of Python, so I can load always the debug p uh, from there, okay? And we have to fix that because if we try to import uh, that, uh, you can try, uh, I will not do it here because I don't have time. I, whoa, I have uh, 13 minutes. <laughs> I think it's enough for the last uh, demo, okay. Uh, so, um, okay, we have to fix this, the, this installation because the backpy uh, needs some modules of the standard library. I mentioned it, uh, site.py, uh, for example, uh, also the underscore site, uh, the, yes, underscore site builtins.py, also JSON, the package JSON, and the XML uh, RPC package, okay? All of that can be copied. All of that can be copied to the to this folder with with these debuggers. So I will show you that in my uh, in my local computer, for example, I have uh, moved them to the root. Okay. So in the debuggers, I have I have the debug adapter for Python 3.7, that is the, the one that I use for NVDA, and I have the debug adapter for Python 3.10, so here I have, okay, this is not needed, <laughs> I have debugpy, I have the, these are copied directly from the virtual environment that I created explicitly for that. This is copied from the um, Python version, from the installed Python version that I uh, have here, from Python 3.10, in this case. This also, uh, this is also copied from there, and these two, is, there are, they are also copied from there, okay? So with that, if I put that in the sys.path uh, um, variable, I can import from that folder, okay? So now I can import the back P there. Okay, but uh, there is a problem because if I try to spawn the adapter from, from the back P just this way, uh, there are some uh, problems because the back P uses a subprocess to uh, launch the uh, adapter, to spawn the adapter to listen, okay? To launch the uh, debug server it uses uh, um, a subprocess that tries to use the same executable as the program that is running the main thread, okay? So if I run the program with Python, with py, gam gamify.py, uh, and so on, uh, the main program is Python. But if I am in a packet program, the sys.executable, that is what, mm, the backpy uses is not Python, is the executable of the packet program, okay? So it will try to uh, launch the server, but it will not be able to do that. So how can we fix that? With this line, the backpy.configure, we set the uh, argument Python to our uh, local copy of python.exe, okay? Uh, okay, local in the sense that it is the local copy of Python in the computer that will run the back P. That is the remote computer, okay? <laughs> Remember that the remote computer is the running computer and the local computer is just for debugging. Okay, so we have to add this line, the debugpy.configure. And uh, we have another problem. I will show you now the, the full code of uh, how this um, uh, ends. We have a second problem that if we have managed to do all these things, uh, we will receive a warning 
because the uh, debugger is trying to use the os.path.arsp path or something like that, or relative path or something like that, uh, but we are inside a zip file, the library.zip. Uh, I will show you this in the remote computer. Okay, in the remote computer, I have, I have, okay. This is the packet version of the, of the program, okay? So you see that here I only have, in the packet version, I only have the games folder with the, okay, the temporary files that are not useful now, okay. In this folder, I only have the guestgame.py with all the needs uh, uh, for debugging, the waves, of course, that are the resources that I need for the packet program, and I have the gamify.exe, this is the packet version of gamify.py, and other the, the DLLs, and, and a zip file that contains the standard library, the uh, many things of the standard library. It has also, for example, our UI.py. Obviously, it is comp compiled, okay? It is comp compiled code. We have also the audio player, okay? So it is a packet version of our uh, things. It is compiled and packed in the library.zip. So what I wanted to say here is that uh, we don't have absolute paths because, or, or relative paths, I don't remember what is the exact problem, but we don't have that because we are in the library.zip. We are not in a real folder, okay? So uh, it cannot read it in the same way. Uh, this is because they are, there are frozen libs, the um, compiled libs inside the library.zip, okay? So this is solved. Uh, uh, when you receive this warning, you see the solution. It, they say uh, directly in the warning. So it is just to put this uh, environment variable. You can do it through the system settings of Windows in this case, or maybe if you are running the program in, uh, okay, in this case, maybe with Py2 app, uh, for example, in MacOS, maybe you can put it in the, <coughs> in the system variables in macOS, okay? Or we can do this directly in our program before running the uh, adapter, okay? We can just set the variable from our code, okay? So the final result is like this. I think it is okay. I'm not sure because I think it, this mm, didn't work mm, very well with the OS environment, but I think it is because of the order, because maybe it, it has to be, mm, uh, okay, if you put it in in the first line or the second, uh, after importing OS, uh, OS uh, you can, uh, it will work, okay? Anyway, I will check and, uh, and, and I will put it uh, the right way in the slides, okay. So the final result, okay. So for the final result, what we have here is, I have to go to my uh, remote computer. I have already in the remote, isn't it? You see the earth? <laughs> okay. So if I go to my remote computer, and I open here the, oh, sorry, I am, the uh, 3 okay, if I, sorry, I, I will open here. I will open it uh, so you can see that I am doing it from the command line, okay? So if I run here the gamify.exe, you will see that now it is loading the backbit from the uh, external uh, uh, 
um, from the debuggers folder, you know, uh, the folder that I made with all the libraries of, the, of debugpy and so on. And if I go again to my local computer and I open here the demos version, oof, I have four minutes, <laughs> okay. Okay, in the final result, okay. I have here, I have only, let me open this with code. Okay, and uh, let me, this is my remote. And this is Visual Studio Code, isn't it? Uh, sorry. Wait. Okay, this is my remote computer. And this is Visual Studio Code, isn't it? Okay, now, okay, now I have the screen split, isn't it? Okay, so uh, now I here only have the, the, you see, you see, I only have the guessgame.py, okay? I don't need anything else. I only need this file and I only need the launch.json prepared to connect to the remote computer, okay? So I will show you now that even if I don't open, let me check. Okay, I will put the, the um, breakpoint as always here, okay? Okay, I can even close this file. I have my um, workspace open and the debugger, the debug adapter is uh, waiting for our connection. So if I now press F5, it will run the program in the other side. I can go there. And when I uh, type here and the breakpoint is reached, it opens directly in our local version, okay? Have you seen that? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I, I did not see. <laughs> okay, so it is now running and we can go here. We can go again here and say, okay, this is three. Again to the uh, local computer. Uh, I am switching between <laughs> both. Uh, for you, it is not uh, clear, maybe. Okay, if I put this here, uh, you will see. Variante red, velocidad 40. Turbo de voces, turbo de voces, turbo de voces, variante red, voces español de España. Voces más inglés americano. Movement and tenacity, turbo 65, turbo de voces, velocidad 40. Velocidad, velocidad, velocidad 25, velocidad 20, velocidad 25. Okay, you will see how I am doing all of this, okay? If I go uh, to, I am in the local. If last line that equals equals secret line number. Okay. He has hit another breakpoint. I go to the remote. Here I can put six. Six. If last line that equals equals secret line number colon number six e dash greater winner comma. Okay. I am comma, still in the remote computer. Control and low equal power remote dot. Ah, okay. It is in Spanish, but it says control and L equipo remoto. Control and low equal power local dot. Controlando el equipo local, creo que ha dicho. I mean, I think uh, it has said that. Okay. If last line that equals equals secret. <laughs> it's switched to Spanish. Okay, so um, you see that this is my way of uh, of doing things. Uh, I will switch again. To, okay, to my earphones. And finally, let me, let me, Okay, in Spanish again. And, um, okay, this is a typical debugging session. Okay, I stopped the debugging session. 
and I will now open a different thing. Uh, this is the oh, five minutes, okay? <laughs> uh, for the second demo. Okay, I have a In the B option, I have the open with code. Again, I close that. Okay, here I have the full code. I have the games here, the guest game, and the library.zip. But this is not a zip file, this is a folder that I have copied here what I need to debug here, okay? I have the UI and I have the audio player and the gamify.py that I have the source code of this file. So I have copied them in the library.zip. So if I now run in the remote computer, okay, uh, I'm sorry. If I go to the remote computer, I close this. Okay, uh, if I go now and do it again, it is already waiting for my connection. And if I go, excuse me? Oh, again, I will close this presentation for a moment. <laughs> Okay, now you can see the waiting for client, isn't it? Yeah. So if I now attach to that process, you see that I have my uh, normal program that is uh, waiting here, or maybe, uh, maybe it has not still jumped. Okay, now it has hit a breakpoint, but if I go now, Okay, I, now I am in the play wave function. If I press F11, okay, I can go to the uh, function itself even if the remote has this library packet. Okay, you see the, the thing? Because in the local uh, computer I have the library unpacket, but in the remote computer, it is packed in the library.zip and it is compiled. If you try to open the file in the library, in the real library.zip, you will not have the code of the library, okay? And we can do this also with the standard library. If we have Python installed in the local computer, then we can go through the standard library even if, uh, okay, you know, I, okay. And that's all. If you want, uh, I think, oh, okay. <laughs> this is just, uh, okay. I, I had another demo of how I debug the remote screen reader from my local screen reader, but I think it is not uh, worth the time. And we don't have time, let me just go to my slides because I have, let me check. Wait, okay, thanks, but I was just okay. Okay, okay, I will not go to that demo, but I have a final word here because uh, you see that I have no time, uh, but uh, this is also working in C++. Uh, I, have, uh, uh, I have an example of this. Uh, I will put it in the repository uh, when I upload it uh, next week, okay? 
So now, yes, thank you and enjoy the bagging.